Well, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jessica. If you are dropping in for the first time and you've never seen a video here on my channel, today I wanted to share with you guys some of my favorite blushes, my least favorite blushes, ones that I think are overrated, maybe they're underrated, maybe you've never heard of one. Basically what I did today is I took my coffee and I got all of the blushes out of my collection and laid them out and picked out ones that I felt fit into different categories for me to kind of organize this video. I've done this a couple of other times. I've done it with my lip collection and my palette collection. I'd love for you to check that out after this video. I will have both of those linked up in the eye and down below if you wanna check those out afterwards. And I typically follow this video up in a few weeks with a declutter of this same collection. Collection, so in this case blushes I feel like after I've talked about a lot of them It's a good time for me to really go through and think about which ones am I really using which ones am I not etc And it's really more just for my own mental sanity and clarity. So here we are. I'm so excited I have some ones that I absolutely hated here and some that I use every single day So let's dive in this is a shirt, by the way, I got from Stitch Fix. It was within a vlog I did on my channel, but I shared like a little quick try on of the things that was sent from Stitch Fix. Cause I think all I asked the stylist for, I just was like, I just want cute tops. Like, I feel like I don't have a lot of standalone tops that are cute without having to wear a camisole underneath, etc. And so this is one that I kept and I like it. This is the longest intro ever as per usual. So I always adjust each of these little categories to fit in with whatever type of makeup I'm talking about. So my first one I'm gonna start with is what is my most used everyday blush like what do I reach for when in doubt I just grab it and slap it on and I always love the way it looks and this was probably the easiest one for me to come up with do you know what it is I'll give you a second put your guesses down in the comments okay it is the MAC Glow Play Blush in the shade So Natural. This one I discovered this past year. I think it was Jamie Page that was the one that made me need to have this. So thanks Jamie, thank you so much. Now I love them and I have more than one color. This is my favorite. If you're near my skin tone, it is like the most natural color on your cheeks. It's weird because I remember when I looked at this shade online, I was like, it kind of looks a little bit brown, like maybe a little too brown for my skin. No, it's like peachy brown. And the thing that makes these special to me is that it's a almost cream to powder formula. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's very unique. And so it's super creamy. So the way I apply it, and I do think this is nice to know, I'll grab a stipple brush like this one here from e.l.f. I've been using lately. I stipple it into it and then press it into my skin. So I'm not necessarily swiping. I'm literally pressing it in and then it, it just instantly blends into the skin. It's incredible. I think you'll be surprised if you've been looking for a blush like th that can just be your holy grail, easy to apply, it never catches the light weird, you will love these and they're so fast. This is probably the only blush out of any of the ones I'm mentioning that if something happened to this particular one, I would buy it again. When I inevitably run out of this, I will buy it again. Like that is how deep my love for this goes. I promise I won't talk about every product that long, but I could go on and on about that baby. <laughs> was I calling that baby or you baby? I don't know. It's like in Home Alone when the, the guy, he's using the recording of the guy in like Angels with Filthy Souls or whatever. And it's like, he's like, I could go on and on baby. I'll be here all night. Okay, next category my most expensive blush. And that, I think there were a few that kind of tied, but this is the one that stood out. And so when I checked it, I was like, yeah, this sucker is $40. And that would be the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic Swish and Pop Blusher. The one I own is in the shade Love Glow. Um, it's really pretty. It's kind of hard to show up. So would I buy this again? Probably not. I think it's a really pretty blush. I think it stays well. It's easy to apply. But I also feel like you can find similar at the drugstore. I know I say that a lot, but I only say it when I mean it. And I really do think blush is something you can get very nice blush at the drugstores. And if I'm being honest, if you're dying to try this, I would get a different shade than this if you're near my skin tone, because I just felt like it shows up, but it's a, I don't know, it's like not as much as I want. So on the other hand, my most inexpensive blush is $4 from e.l.f. It is their monochromatic multi-stick. Again, this is a new discovery this year. And I really enjoyed this. It's really easy to apply. So you can, again, take a stipple brush or a sponge, pat it right onto the actual little blush here, and then tap it onto the skin. This is one I think is a little too pigmented for me to just put right onto my cheek and then blend it. You absolutely can though, but that's just my preferred way of applying it. I just feel like it's easy to apply. It stays a surprising amount of time. This one is such a pretty shade and it does blend pretty easily into like kind of a nice wash of color. 
The color I have is Dazzling Peony, and I think it's gorgeous. So now we're gonna get into two of my favorite categories, worth the hype and not worth the hype. So the blush that I think is genuinely worth the hype that it gets on YouTube and magazines, whatever, is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes. I've owned a few of these over the years. This is the one I currently have in Dim Infusion. They have a lot of different shades. They have ones that have more of a deeper pigment, ones that are lighter. This one is light. And so if you are any deeper than me, this definitely won't work for you. It's kind of akin to the Charlotte Tilbury in that it's a little bit harder to show up, but the one thing I like about this is you can kind of layer it and build it up a little bit more, and it always looks so natural on the skin. And I think the reason that is is because it's kind of infused with like a lighter powder in there that's kind of glowy, and so it gives this gorgeous glow, but there's no, at least in this one, there's no detectable shimmer or glitter or anything like that. It just looks like you're lit from within. And for a powder to be able to do that is pretty impressive. I feel like I typically get that look from more of like a liquid or a cream blush. So I think this is beautiful. I love reaching for this. It's nice because if I am in a hurry and getting ready and I do grab this, I can throw it on really quickly. And because it's not crazy pigmented, it never gives me like clown cheeks. You know what I mean? This lip product, okay. So I was sent from Lancome their Juicy Tubes and I was all excited because I had never tried them and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're back, like from like the 90s and early 2000s. But I don't know if they all smell like this. This one's called Melon Rewind, so this one definitely smells like melon. But it's the stickiest gloss I've ever used. It's so sticky. And so I have a lip liner on underneath it that's giving it the color you see. But holy cannoli, I don't know, man. I don't think I'd go out with this. Like the second a single hair is blown in the wind, it's gonna stick to your freaking mouth. <laughs> then you gotta take 10 years trying to fish it out of your lips. And... So on the other hand, a product that I don't think is worth the hype that it gets would be, and this one was kind of tough. So let me explain my thinking here. It's the Cover FX Monochromatic Blush Duo. Now let me say, I actually think this is nice, but I just think it's so hyped up because first of all, I think the packaging is gorgeous. It feels very high end. it's got a nice big mirror. My understanding is the idea is that you've get, got like a single colored blush and then more of like a blush topper that can kind of go on top of it, make it pop and glow. So I don't think the idea of this is bad at all. It's just that it's still like $40 or $38 or something. And I'm just not totally sold on this being better than other blushes I've tried. Now, on the other hand, you do get technically like kind of two blushes in one for that price. So if you really did want to do break it down in half, yeah, yeah, you're getting two blushes for the price. That but I guess at the end of the day, I don't find myself reaching for this. And so that tells me, at least for my own taste, everything I kind of need to know about it. It could be that this is just a little brighter than I like on my cheeks. This is called Pink Dahlia. I wore it just yesterday to try it out again to prep for this video. And I was like, yeah, I just, there's a reason I'm not reaching for it. Editing Jesse popping in to say, I was just clicking around and looking at the shades of these monochromatic duos. And there is one that's more of like a soft peach that looks much lighter than the shade I have here, which is Pink Dahlia. So I think if I did ever buy another one, and I don't know that I will, but if I ever did, that would be the one I'd get because it looks like it's not quite as pigmented. So it'd be a little bit easier to work with, a little bit easier to layer the two colors together for my skin tone. The other thing is I don't love blush toppers. I would much rather just grab a highlighter really quickly and tap it in the areas I want than put on a blush topper or I'd rather just use like a shimmery blush. I keep wanting to apologize and say like, guys, I know like it's just my own personal taste, or, but it's like, well, duh, that's why I'm sharing this. It's obviously my own personal opinion and we all have different uh, taste in that. This video is gonna be so long, <laughs> guys. Somebody send help. I'm enjoying sitting down and filming though today. It was one of those days that I got like way later of a start. One thing rolls into the next and it's like way later than I normally film. So it's just been an interesting day. Okay, I like this category. Fave product from a favorite brand. So this one, I went with Physicians Formula, which is one of my favorite brands, but it is their Natural Defense Multicolor Stick. This was a more recent discovery as well. This is the easiest product to apply. Like if there was another category for easiest to apply, this would be on there. I will literally take this and paint it onto my cheeks like that and then take a stipple brush or even my finger or a sponge and blend it in and it is seamless. It is the most seamless color. Now, I think part of the magic of this is finding a color that works well for you too and I, only, I think they only have a few but this color works really well. You can see it's just slightly pinker than my skin and so it makes it even easier. But the formula of this is so easy to blend into. 
So the shade I have is called Soft Pink, by the way. And it also has SPF of 20. I mean, I have SPF all over my face, but another layer on top in certain areas is not the worst thing in the world. So yeah, I absolutely adore this product. For the record, I still have Hamilton stuck on my head. It's been going for months now, guys. Somebody send help. So this next category is my newest blush, like newest added to my collection. And I'm only gonna talk about this briefly because it's simply another shade of the MAC Glow Play blushes. This is the one in Cheeky Devil. It's just a really pretty pink and I love it. I still find myself reaching for So Natural more, but this one still is pretty. It's not as bright as you'd think, and that's part of the reason I think I reach for So Natural a little bit more, um, but it is gorgeous. I still am reaching for it a lot, because again, I just love that formula so much. But I think if you're thinking about buying one and you're between the two and you're anywhere near my skin tone, I would go with So Natural. All right, my oldest blush with a caveat, I definitely say caveat at least once a video, okay, <laughs> is the Benefit Dallas Blush. Now this particular one was a newer one, but I had one of these, it's like one of my favorites. I've had one of these for years. So it was about time, I think it was last year that I finally replaced it. This is like, it almost looks like a bronzer, but it's got this rose tint to it that is so pretty on the skin. I can't, I know, I feel like it never does it justice. It always just looks like meh but it is so pretty. Well, I just popped onto, what am I on, Sephora, and saw that they make like mini versions of the Dallas blush. I'm like, perfect, that's great, you can save a little money. And uh, just saw that it has a new version of it, meaning it's got a slightly pinker shade with a hint of soft shimmer. But I liked the old one. <laughs> it does have a certain smell. I think that each of the Benefit blushes have a certain smell. It's very, very light. It's not a super strong, but it's kind of a pleasant light scent that just gives me all the feels. Makes me think of like me first discovering like Benefit Box blushes like six years ago. Was that like only six years ago? Had to have been longer. I remember pining after them for so, so long, like just going into, where were they even sold then? Sephora, Ulta? And just like walking by them and like opening each box and like looking at them and, uh, I kind of want to get the, do they still make the Hervana blush? I don't even know if they do. I kind of want to get that one again because that was such a pretty like cooler toned pink. Best memory would be this Kosas Duo. It's the color and light cream in the shade 8th Muse. I've used a lot of this. It's really, really pretty. If I'm being honest, I actually think I like the highlight in this better than the blush, but I really, really love both of them. They're easy to apply. I will, this is one I do typically blend with my fingers. And then once it's pretty much blended in, I'll grab like my sponge and kind of tap the outside of it. Beautiful. I own, I think, two different shades of this, but this one is one I took on an Alaskan cruise. We went on with our best friends, and it was just such an enjoyable trip, and yeah, so that one is definitely on there for that. Most underrated would have to be the Stila Convertible Colors. I think it used to be that these were not so underrated. They were like a cult favorite, but it was so long ago, but they're still around, and they're still amazing, and they were kind of one of the OG cream blush products out there came out weird. It's just so pretty. So I have the shade Peony. I always say when I mention this that the shades online do not match what they look like in real life. I don't know what, or at least on, I think it was Ulta's site, like Peony looks nothing like this online, but it's so pretty in person. So either buy it in person if you can, if you're trying to avoid going to the store, look up swatches people have online before making your choice because the colors are off. But I think the packaging is so cute and kind of like whimsical in a way. And these last so long on the cheeks. Again, I just use a stipple brush, press it into my cheeks. I've worn this a lot the past month and it's just lovely. I love this shade. I don't feel like I need to try a bunch of the shades, but this is one I highly recommend and I just, no one really talks about really anything from Stila anymore. Like, I, although like the Stila shimmer and glows and glitter and glows, I feel like people still, still talk about those. That just reminded me, do you guys remember, they still sell it, the Physicians Formula Happy Blushes that supposedly like made you happier when you use them. I don't know if it was like the scent or what, I don't know what the claim was. But I think they're still sold, but I used to have one and I loved it. I loved the smell of it when I put it on. I should buy that again. Okay, but most overrated is the Kylie blushes. Most things from Kylie. It's not that they're bad. And you know, it's funny, I'd mentioned this in some video. I don't know if it was like a trying new makeup video and a few of you guys were like, oh yeah, I bought that on your recommendation. I'm like, I don't remember like recommending it, recommending it. I think I just tried it and thought it was fine. Do you know what I'm saying? So I always feel bad because I'm like, 
I, I do think this is a little overrated. The blush is fine. It's just overpriced. This is just a matte blush. I have it in the shade Batty on the Block. I bought this in store, you know, way pre-pandemic times. And it's just fine. It's just a simple blush. Nothing wrong with it. I just don't think you need to pay the money. The packaging is kind of cute if you like the light pink, which I do. But yeah, I just don't think it's anything special. And frankly, what are those? Probably around 20 bucks. I'd almost just say go for like any other blush I recommended here and not that one. Because it's just, there's nothing really that special about it. I have a fuzz on my lips. I told you guys. By the way, I feel like my bronzer's looking either awesome or crazy. I can't decide. <laughs> it's the L'Oreal Lumi bronzer, baby. It's so good. I can't get enough of it. All right, this is a fun one. The most nostalgic slash like old school beauty YouTube vibes blush. And I had to give that to the Milani Luminoso blush. I recently repurchased this maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, and it is so gorgeous. I think they reformulated it quite a few years ago um, to have less shimmer because for a while it literally had like glitter in it and I remembered when everyone was raving about it a long time ago I was like I don't get it but it's so pretty it's just got this gorgeous sheen this peachy pink color and it, it's it's absolutely stunning yeah that one OG beauty YouTube vibes but also it's stellar and it's still available so that is awesome that one was actually a contender for most inexpensive because it was like $6.99 on Target site. And then the e.l.f. one I actually mentioned for that was like $4. So they were close. Most disappointing. I have two. <laughs> First would be this CoverGirl Clean Fresh Cream Blush. It was just like weirdly metallic. And I love a good liquid or cream blush. But it was weirdly metallic. And I it just always looked patchy once I actually got it on my cheeks. It was just not a flattering color. So the shade I have is Butterflies. I just was not a fan and it just ended up not looking even on my skin either, you know what I mean? And then the other one I was disappointed by is from Maybelline and it's their Cheek Heat. I have it in the shade Coral Ember number 30. And this one I very recently tried in a video and it literally would just skip. It was like so greasy. It was almost the opposite of the CoverGirl. It was so, not greasy, but like gloopy. And I could not get it to look even on my skin and it wore off in like an hour. When I posted the video of me trying that, I got so many comments saying the same thing. Like I've tried other shades, they were similar. There might be one or two shades that are decent, but again, there are better options out there. I was so disappointed in both of these. So the reality is I layered all these other blushes I didn't even mention because they didn't necessarily fit into a category here. And some of them are my absolute favorites. So like I mentioned earlier, stay tuned, subscribe. And in a few weeks, I am gonna do a blush declutter so you'll get to see every single product I own, swatch everything. And then of course, I'm gonna be getting rid of some things and sharing some more of my favorites. So definitely stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you're interested. I do upload three videos a week. I do makeup stuff, but I also do lifestyle, home, vlog, cooking. And I'd love to say hey to you on my Instagram as well. It is at it's Jessica Braun, and I will see you guys in my next one.